Hi, and welcome to Acrylicos channel. Today, I'm gonna guide you through to create this generative art algorithm. So every time you click on randomize, you get a new different artwork. In order to follow along, you need basic understanding of the Python programming language, and you need to have VSketch installed. We show you in the previous video how to install it and how to set up the project. So make sure to watch that video in order to follow along. If you watch our previous video, this should be familiar to you. We create just an empty sketch. We start from scratch. In order to realize this algorithm, we need a little bit of math. So I'm going to refer to this, which is a very basic trigonometric rules. And it's going to be useful because in order to create a, a circle, we need to know that the hypotenuse is the radius and the opposite side is the Y coordinate and the adjacent side is going to be the X coordinate. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do just a basic circle. We're going to create a variable radius. It's going to be a circle with radius 10. I'm going to import the math module. I'm going to also import for numpy as np. We're going to use that later. Now for angle in range 360. And then we're going to create our variable x that is going to be the radius time math dot cosinus and then we need to pass the angle and the angle is measured in radians so we need to convert the angle from degrees to radians and we do it with math radians and then the angle then we do the same for the y but for the y we need the sinus again this is just this rule and if we create a basket dot point in the x and y we see a circle so this is the, the foundation and now after the circle we're gonna create one spiral then we're gonna create multiple spirals and then we're gonna accommodate our data in such a way that it's gonna be easy for us to interpolate and then we're gonna interpolate so now we have our circle and we understand that we can get the coordinates with this i'm gonna make a slightly change i'm gonna start with a very very small radius and each time i'm just gonna increment my radius by a small amount so now we see that we get a spiral and then we need to get more spirals so we can interpolate so in order to do that we we declare a variable to say how many spirals do we want amount of spirals and this is gonna be five then we're gonna do another for loop for current spiral in range amount of spirals and then we add to the radius the current spiral so we have different spirals with different radius if we save it then we see here our spiral. Now, this is too round. We would like to have it more of a square shape. And we can do it if we declare a variable here called detail. Let's start with 20. And then we're gonna draw only a point if the angle is divisible by 20. So we can check this with the modulus operator. If angle modulus detail is equal to zero that means that the current angle is divisible by 20 and now then we see a lot of less points when later when we when we match the points we're gonna see that it has a different shape now we need to put a little randomness to our algorithm so we can create a variable of randomness and this is gonna be how much random is gonna be for each coordinate to each coordinate we add a little of randomness with bsk.random and then we pass the randomness and we do the same for the y coordinate now we save we have our points um, let me put a little figure so you can see so we have our points a little random now we need to group our data and in order to do that we're gonna store the x coordinates and the y coordinates in different array we, we're gonna have one array that is gonna contain all the coordinates and this is gonna be in such a way that it's gonna be a list of lists so that each list has all the coordinates for the first spiral and then the second list is gonna have all the x coordinates for the second spiral and the third and, the, and so on in order to do that we're gonna create all x's and we're gonna do a, an empty array and then we're gonna do a list comprehension so we can create multiple empty lists and this is gonna be for and this is an anonymous variable in range of the amount of spirals at the end of this line we're gonna have five empty lists inside of this and if we change this number we're gonna have more than then we do the same for the y's and now what we can do we can append each coordinate to the to the array in the index so let me explain so for example here i can go all x's and then at the current spiral because we know that this range is exactly the same 
as the length of this array so we can access the index and then we can go with append that means that for the spiral zero in each iteration in the all x's zero we're gonna have the x's of the current spiral i hope it makes sense and then we do the same for the y and now we have our data group now the next thing we need to know is we're gonna just display it so you can understand a little bit more what these two variables mean so i'm just gonna do a for e in range len of all x's i'm gonna go with the current x's and this is gonna be all x's time in the e and then I'm gonna also get the y's, but the y's are in the other array, but they have the same length, so it's, it's no problem. Now I'm gonna get the coordinates, and then I'm gonna zip them, zip the current x's and the current y's. I'm gonna convert it to a list. Coordinates, gonna be a list, and then the same coordinates. And then we can just, in order to see, we're gonna call the polygon with the coordinates. Now we can see that the first polygon is just the coordinates of the first spiral. So that means that we are going to iterate over all polygons, over all of these elements. So the first element contains all the x coordinates for the first spiral and then the second and so on. So now we need to get this polygon and the next polygon and we need to interpolate it and with every other polygon. We're going to add a minus one because we're going to access the next one. So we can do next x's is gonna be all x's in the index i plus one and then the same with the y's and now we are ready to interpolate it so what we can do is uh, we're gonna declare the amount of steps we want to interpolate so let's say interpol interpolation steps is 20 and then for interpolation step in range interpolation steps and then it's gonna be actually very easy because now we already have our current x's and our next x's and they are already at, at list of floats so we can just get directly the interpolated x's and it's gonna be vsk.lerp and then we're gonna pass the current x's and the next x's but as numpy array so we go numpy array and then we pass the current x's and then we do the same with mpy array with the next x's and then the amount is gonna be the interpolation step divided by the whole interpolation steps it's the same as we did in the previous tutorial and now we do exactly the same for the y's, but we just change here interpolated y, and then here current y's, and then y's. The same thing we did here, but we just do it inside the for loop. And now we, we change this to interpolated x, and this was with interpolated y. And now if we save it, and let's change bandwidth so let's put it around 0 4 so now we can see that the algorithm is implemented so there are a couple of things that you might want to, to tune and you can do it so for example here in this range what we can do is we can do an numpy.lin space and then we're gonna start by zero, we're gonna go to 360, and then we're gonna have 361 points. And the advantage of this is that we can play around with these values. So for example, if I'm gonna go with the half, I have the half of the spiral, and maybe I want to go through the double of the amount. So it's not something very impressive, but you can play around with, with this. Let's maybe go back and let's maybe multiply this by four. And you have four times so you can change how your spiral look you can also play around with how detailed it is so for example if you put a uh, very very uh, detailed this is what you're gonna get which might seem interesting for example let's not put so many spirals 
uh, let's put uh, only two, some kind of um, exploration potential. Yes, you can play around with every variable you can see here that is hard coded. You can just play around putting a variable, changing the, the variable, for example, the interpolation steps or every other variable. If we go back to where we were and then here in the 316, and now we have our spirals, we have our randomized algorithm. I hope you enjoyed watching and please, if you like this content, subscribe, like, comment. Hope, hopefully we see us again. Bye-bye.